Thank you. Sometimes you're going to be the only person that's going to celebrate you. And so you have to learn how to use your tongue to be a blessing rather than a curse. The same tongue that you tear down with is the same tongue that you can incur. The same tongue that you say, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know how I'm going to survive this. I don't know how I'm going to pay these bills. That same tongue, you can say, you know what? I'm going to be all right. I don't know how it's going to work, but God's going to make a way out of nowhere. God, I bless you in the midst of this circumstance. You can use the same tongue to encourage yourself. It's all, it all depends on what you say out of your mouth. Your spirit feeds on your words. Amen. It feeds on what you say. Are you speaking life or are you speaking death? Are those who are around you, are they speaking life or are they speaking death? I'm giving you principles to win the fight. I'm in a battle. I don't have no time to be in the midst of a bunch of naysayers. I don't have no time to be in the midst of preachers who always talk about what we can't do and how bad it is and how rough it is. I need to be around some preachers that can say, we're going to take this city. We're going to accomplish some great things. We're going to do all that God has called. I need to be around some preachers that can say, you know, we're more than conquerors. It look bad, but we're going to do it. We're going to reach the children. We're going to make a way. We're going to change the community. We're going to establish it. I need to be around some people that see, you. the Bible says that iron sharp is iron. If you want to be sharp, you got to be around some people that got the same, that's made of the same stuff you made of. And when you begin to rub against those people, you get sharp and you get sharp, you get sharp, you get more vision, you get more energy, you get more drive, you get more zeal about your life. But when you're around a bunch of people that have no substance, they have no strength, they just rob you of what you got. Hallelujah. Some people who are like-minded, people who got the same dream, the same vision, who want to be something, accomplish something. If you're around people that don't want to do nothing but sit under the tree all day and play checkers, then they're not going to help you be, be the best you can be. They're not going to help you accomplish anything. You can't teach me nothing sitting under the tree. I need to be around some people who got somewhere to be, who got something to do, who got some type of goal or agenda or something they're trying to accomplish in their life. I can't sit under this tree with you every day. somebody who has substance in their life Amen. Amen. because I have substance in my life and so I want to be around like-minded people you have to understand your words feed your spirit another thing you have to be careful what you say because your words will either build you up or destroy you talking especially to parents your words either encourage your children or they tear them down things about words or one of the things about words is that words carry weight, say it like this. Because I know the world has a saying that say what uh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's not true. That's not true. Words will hurt you. Words will be with you long after the bruises and the cuts and the scrapes have healed. When the black eyes go gone and the bus lip has healed up, what you said will still be in my spirit. There are some people who are right now grown but still struggling with things that were said to them when they was uh, 10 years old, 11 years old, 13 years old. I'm grown, I'm married, I'm living my own life, but I'm still carrying around the baggages and the wounds that were spoken to me in my childhood. You have to be mindful of what you say. Your words carry weight. Your words carry power. They carry authority. When you say something to somebody, you may not see the wound, but you better understand that in the spirit, you have just cut that person. You have just wounded that person. You have just hurt that person. And you you have to be mindful of what you say. Don't let your anger push you into a position where you are lo where you lose the control of your tongue and just let it in and everything fly out of your mouth. Because once it leaves your mouth, it's going to hit its target and you can't pull it back. You can say, I'm sorry, but it will not change what you said. You can say, I didn't mean it, but it will not change what happened. You have to be mindful of your words. Amen. The Bible says a man that says, Check on your tongue. God said, ain't no use of you talking about how spiritual you are and how anointed you are. 
I'm mad, but I'm going to track my words. I'm upset, but I'm not going to say it. I want to say it. I feel like saying it, but I'm not going to say it because I am mature, because I'm not a child. I'm not an infant. I have control over myself. Be mindful. The Bible says that the tongue is set ablaze by hell, empowered by hell. Satan will use your tongue to kill your own children. Man. Ain't nobody else got to kill your children. You kill your own children by the things you say. You tell them what they can't do. You tell them how stupid they are. You tell them how uh, 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 foolish they are. You tell them uh, they'll never accomplish this and never, they, 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 they won't do this. You, your words, your words will murder your own children. Your own words will destroy their hope, destroy their dream, destroy their, destroy their vision for their life. Your words will set them in a cage that they'll spend the rest of their life trying to get out. Ain't nobody put no rope on them, put no chain on them, but your words have encaged their spirit and they'll spend the rest of their life trying to break free out of what mama said I was or what daddy said. You're going to be just like your daddy. You ain't no good. Your, your daddy wasn't no good. You're going to be, and your anger with the father is not child. Your anger with the mother is not causing you to rob the child of her potential. You got to be mindful of what you say. Don't let Satan use your tongue to curse you. Amen. Be mindful of what you say. Don't get caught up in your emotions, your feet. Your feet is your emotions. That's the devil's playground. That's why he, that's why he loves to play. He loves for you to get angry, to get upset. He'll sit just to make you mad because he knows that when Corey gets mad, ain't no telling what Corey gonna sit out of his mouth. Send somebody to make you mad and then step right and just watch this. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. He finna get him, he finna get him. Oh, he finna tell him now, he gonna tell him. And the whole time you are about to destroy the very thing you've been working to build up. Ain't nobody got to come and kill nothing. You kill your own people. Right. About what you say out of your own mouth. Be mindful of your words. Don't let Satan use your mouth. He will use anybody that will yield themselves to them, to him. He will use you to destroy your own children, destroy your own marriage, destroy your own ministry, your own purpose, your own potential. Be mindful of your words. The Bible says, how can blessing and cursing come out of the same pipe? It's impossible. Let me tell you why. Because once cursings come out of the pipe, then any blessing that comes thereafter is contaminated by the curse. Hmm. I'm going to say it again. And I want you to understand this. When you begin to curse, when you begin to speak in an ungodly manner, when you begin to deal with somebody in an ungodly manner, even when you begin to speak good things to that person, whatever you say after you've cursed me, it's going to be baked, it's going to be in contrast to what you've already said to me. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? In other words, once you, once you go off on me, anything you say to me after that point is going to be contaminated by the fact that you just went off on me. And though you are trying to say something good now and something that's beneficial to me and something that I really need to hear, the only thing I can really hear is and remember is the fact that you just went So you have to be mindful of what you say so that it won't contaminate what really needs to be said or really needs to be heard. Let's move on a little bit here. He says, another issue. Let's go to the book of Romans, the 10th chapter. Still dealing with confession. We're still dealing with the tongue, rather. The power of your tongue, the power that you possess with your mouth your lips, your tongue. Especially for the fathers, you have a great power, a great authority in your words. Your children look for your approval. 
they look for your congratulations. They, they look for your pet on the vice. There is nothing like the approval of a father. You have to be very mindful of that, very mindful of that. There are young girls who give themselves to guys who are not worthy of them, all because the guy said something that they've been wanting to hear all their life. Because he said some things that made them feel love, a love that they have been looking for, yearning for their whole life, because daddy was never there. Daddy never validated me. Daddy never spoke into my life. Daddy never celebrated me. And because daddy never celebrated me, there is a desire now in the young girl who, 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 who the first guy who comes around and says something to her that makes her feel something. That makes, I told you, see, words minister to the spirit. Words minister to the spirit. Whether they're good or bad, they do work in the spirit. And so when he comes and begins to speak to her, he is, go he is bypassing her mind. He is touching her spirit, her heart. He's saying some things to her that her spirit has been yearning for. He's saying some things to her that's, that, that, that's, that's pleasing, that's, that's touching some places that have never been touched before. And because of that, she's willing to give herself to him even though he really don't want her. You really don't want me, but because of the way you make me feel when you say the things you say, I'm willing to exchange my body for your words. I know you don't mean it, but just say it to me anyway. I know you ain't no, I know I'm not the only one, but when you're with me, just make me feel like I'm the only one, and I'll be sufficient. That'll be sufficient. I know I'm not the one, just make me, it's just the way you make me feel. I'll give you my body if you can just make me Words minister to the spirit, good or bad. You have to be mindful of what you say. Either you're encouraging, you're building up, you're strengthening, or you're tearing down. Be mindful of what you say. Let's move on just a little bit. I'm going to deal with the issue of confession. Uh, Romans the 10th chapter, verse number 8. Romans 10 and 8. The Bible says, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee. Even in, the, even in our mouth and in the heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Ninth verse. That if thou shalt, this is what we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, with your mouth, very important, the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Tenth verse. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The Bible says that you are not even saved until you confess salvation with your mouth. This is, so, this is how important your mouth is. This is how important your words is. The Bible says you can believe all you want to believe, but until you open your mouth and confess with your mouth that you are a child of God, that you are born again, until you speak it out of your mouth, God says you're not even saved. This is how important your words is. Your words are. You have to lay hold of the promise with your words. Amen. You lay hold of the promise with your words. Say what I say. 
because it's vitally important that you speak it out of your mouth that my sins are forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ and that I am now a son of God, that I am his child, that I'm born again. You have to say it out of your mouth. Why? Because it is the confession of that that makes it a reality in your life. Let me deal with something before I move on. Confession is very simply saying what God says. That's what confession is. My job as a believer is to say what God says or what God has said. Irregardless of what my life situation may look like, the Bible says that the weak say I'm strong. The Bible says, no, God is how bad you feel or what's going on in your body. The Bible says, let the weak say I'm strong. Let the man who got pain in his body say I'm healed. I don't feel great, but I'm healed. How am I healed? I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. He was wounded for my transgression. He was, he was wounded for my transgression. He was wounded. He was wounded for my transgression. He went through some stuff for my sin. I am healed by what he went through. I have to receive it by faith and speak it and declare that. Amen. Bible says the chastisement of my peace was upon him. He went through a beating for my peace. He went through a whoop, a whooping for my peace. They laughed at him. They spit on him. They stretched hair on his face. They put a crown of thorn on his head. They nailed him to the cross. He went through some stuff that I may have peace. Hallelujah. Chastisement of my peace was on him. And by his stripes, I am healed. I am healed. Not going to be healed. I'm healed right now. Not going to be healed one day. I'm healed right now. Right now, today, I am healed. Despite what the doctor said, I'm healed. Despite what I feel in my body, I'm healed. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about faith in the word of God. That was principle number two. You got to have faith in the word of God. If you're going to win this battle, because it's a battle of faith, you got to have faith in the word of God. I believe Good job. 